January. It's the month that dawns the beginning of 2024, and with it presents an opportunity to reflect on the past and set goals for the new year. It's easy to fall into a pattern of worry as we begin to doubt whether or not we're really up to the changes that we say we want to make. Fear of change, uncertainty about opportunities, and worry about the future steal away so much from us if we let it. But I think it's important to hold on to the why when setting goals. Because at the end of the day, our purpose, reasons, are what will ultimately bridge the gap between who we were and who we aim to be. And I want to encourage you with a reminder that what you're facing is okay. You're not alone. The past is behind us, and the future is an open canvas awaiting exploration. So come along with me as we embrace the possibilities that lie ahead. One of the ways that I wanted to usher in the new year with good tidings and fresh beginnings was to pot a house plant for my bedroom. You might remember from a previous vlog that I purchased a ginger plant from a local nursery and I was so excited to have it brighten up my space and add a natural touch to the room. Only it didn't make it sadly. It became very sick and I had no choice but to throw it out. So I actually ordered this new plant, which is a peace lily, off of a website called The Sill. It was my second time ordering a plant off of this website, and I had such a great experience the first time that I decided to order from them again. It's so cool how the plant arrives to you at your door in a box, and even due to the cold temperatures this time of year, they took further precautions and winterized my plant, making sure that it was all toasty and warm in its box. And I couldn't believe that they even had these heating packs tucked in and around it, and they were still warm. My plant arrived safely all the way from Alabama, and it was such a fun experience from picking out my plant online to receiving it by mail. This video isn't sponsored, though I wish it was because I'm just really a fan of the sill. Hey honey. I knew I wanted a peace lily because it's a tolerant plant of low light situations, it's a great air oxygenator for the home, and it's also relatively easy to care for and low maintenance. I can't wait to see if it blooms in the spring and I really hope it will do well here. So my default scenario is to immerse myself into my own work and alone time, I decided I wanted to kickstart the new year by spending quality time with loved ones. It's often said that the lifeblood of a fulfilled existence is the relationships that you have. And after getting together with some of our closest friends for this oyster roast, I can honestly say that I better understand and agree with these words. 
Our friend Craig was so hyped to have everyone over for an oyster roast, and they generously opened their home to all of us for a cozy night of fellowship around this little bonfire. Into the evening, we enjoyed one another's company, coupled with good food, many laughs, and a connection that many of us needed as our relationships rekindled, like adding a layer of fresh logs to the fire. The decision to commit to consistent time with family and friends yields great dividends in terms of generating peace and fulfillment. I'm growing more in tune with this fact and finding it even more crucial in linking happiness to productivity. Another aspect of maintaining rich relationships with those that are dear to me is the aspect of listening. I have two sisters, and when the three of us are at my mom's house, like this day when we got together for a taco salad luncheon, there can be a lot of chatter and a lot of competition for the conversation. But in actively listening, we realize how much more we bring to the relationship circle. Psychologist Martin Siegman has coined the phrase active constructive responding and encourages patients to respond in a positive and engaging fashion so that both parties to the conversation gain from what's being discussed. Just say hi. So, I'm going to be redoing the bathroom, but before I can get in there and paint, I need to bring everything out, take things off the walls, you know, get a clean slate. That way I can wipe down the walls and the baseboards and the trim, and then do some patching over any holes. Basically prep the walls and get them ready for paint. So let's go ahead and get things going. A home project I've had in the back of my mind for some time now has been to give our guest bathroom an upgrade and a much needed redo. The new year is a perfect time to be productive and face the home projects head on. The yellow color of the walls had to go first off. And there's nothing like picking out a new paint color and freshening up the look of your space. I was just so ready to modernize this bathroom, which is one that I use quite often since it has the tub. I had this vision of white, gray, and silver as a color scheme for quite some time, so all I really needed to do was add some fresh paint and bring everything together. It's such a rewarding feeling when you finished all of the painting and cleaning and then it's time to bring everything back in and put the room all together. I've painted most of the rooms in our home, including the master bathroom and the master bedroom, the kitchen, and now the laundry room. I really enjoy painting and luckily it doesn't take me too long to finish. When I redo a room, I definitely keep a budget in mind and try to keep things simple, comfortable, and livable. It's also great to go thrifting in order to find items when upgrading your space and to shop on markdown and clearance aisles at HomeGoods and TJ Maxx, which is where I usually luck out. And I don't know if it was more of a win for me for the fact that I repainted the room or for the fact that I cleaned and scrubbed like crazy from top to bottom, a deep cleaning that hadn't even been done since moving in. I'm just overall satisfied with the way that the bathroom turned out and really happy that I was able to use the new year to get this project finished. Something I really enjoy, especially when done with loved ones, is to go thrifting. There's something exciting about setting out and plundering the thrift shops in search of an inexpensive treasure. The thrill of the hunt, as they say. I don't do this very often because I try to limit my shopping, since I don't have a lot of space in my small cottage, 
But in January, I had the opportunity to go out with my girlfriend Ada on a thrifting adventure to a local town where the thrift stores are plentiful. Ada had been thrifting to some of the places before and had already listed them on a sheet of paper so that we could rate them throughout the day and decide if they were worth keeping on our radar for future thrifting adventures. I found this battery-operated votive candle for only $2 straight off the bat. I had a small budget and didn't want to go too crazy, however, because there were only a few items that I was really looking for specifically. We went into some really neat places that were very tidy and contained so many cool items, and it was certainly a plus if they were reasonably priced, which some were and some weren't reasonable at all, actually. We really liked this place called Gather Thrift and Cafe, and they had clothing racks outside where everything was only a dollar. And I did find this lovely white blouse on the rack and decided to purchase it after trying it on. We also hit up the Goodwill because why not? I couldn't leave this cute little basket behind because it was only $2.99, and I planned to use it to hold all of my clothespins in the laundry room. And lastly, anyone who knows me personally knows that I love a Humane Society thrift store. This one's called the Big Flea Thrift Store, and it was last but certainly not least on our list of places to check out. This sturdy basket was definitely coming home with me at first sight, and it was only $6. They also had so many books, hardcovers were only a dollar, and paperbacks 50 cents. And this large copy of a Georgia O'Keeffe biography will be a great shelf decor piece, I think, when I take the dust jacket off. And I immediately had a vision with it in mind for an upcoming decorating project. I think that thrifting is significant this time of year because it further reminds us to see the beauty in less and appreciate the value in our community. Going into thrift stores sets a goal to discover a good value in what we hope to find there. And it's different for everyone. I love that it also allows us to find unique, well-made quality pieces that have already stood the test of time. very chilly outside but I just sat out on the front porch and enjoyed my morning coffee. Now that I'm back inside I think I'd like to make some gummies, some fruit gummies. So if you'd like to come into the kitchen with me I will show you how I make them. It's very very easy and it's a perfect and nutritious little snack that we can make together. Let's go. So all you really need here are just a few ingredients. You need to choose your juice of choice. I love the tart cherry juice. Of course, some natural honey. Your gelatin, that's what's going to give the gummies their consistency. A little bit of lemon juice. It doesn't have to be fresh squeezed, but I happen to have some fresh lemons on hand. And just a little dash of salt.
diet resolutions are often made this time of year, though they aren't always sustainable solutions for long-term results. It can be really challenging to include healthy eating and regular exercise into our already busy lives, especially when we aim to optimize it right away rather than to take a slow and steady approach. One of the things I'm slowly starting to kick out is sugar, and I find that snacks like these fruit gummies are a great way to satisfy and appeal to my sweet tooth naturally. I'm also going to take this half of lemon and some baking soda and clean my cutting board up because lemon is a wonderful natural cleaner and baking soda of course is all natural and is a perfect abras ab abrasive kind of cleaner. So I just put it on there and scrub, scrub, scrub with the lemon. There's some sticky stuff from the juice on here. That's how the baking soda comes into play and then the lemon will disinfect and make it smell nice and fresh. The gelatin that I use is a collagen protein sourced from pasture-raised cows. And because collagen is the most abundant protein in the human body, it really plays a key role in numerous bodily functions. And tart cherry juice in particular is known to help promote healthy brain function and a deeper, more restful sleep, which is why I absolutely love using it. As you can tell, I really love to keep either homemade marshmallows or fruit gummings on hand as a nutritious and delicious snack because I really enjoy them and because they're so easy to make. When it's time for me to get movement into my day, I either opt for an at-home workout while watching a coaching video, or I go outside to walk for at least three and a half to four miles. Walking is a great way to recharge and optimize both our mental and physical health. I always feel more invigorated and refreshed after a walk and like I really needed it. I can't wait to get back into regular routines of walking daily, the holidays and the severe weather patterns have made it difficult to go, but I don't want to make excuses. If you have high levels of anxiety and stress, then walking is a great way to deal with it naturally and either eliminate it entirely or reduce your symptoms. I'm a big proponent of getting outside to walk and it's my favorite way to enjoy nature, appreciate the beauty in my surroundings, and get grounded in new perspectives and feelings of gratitude. Speaking of gratitude, thank you from the bottom of my heart for watching and for sticking around through my videos to the end. It makes me really happy to see that you enjoy my simple moments and storytelling through video, and it encourages me to continue making more vlogs and sharing my thoughts and slow cottage living. I'm sending my love and blessings your way and praying that your winter days continue to be cozy and warm. See you next time, friends.